Hi, this is Kim Chadwell. I'm here to share with you some things that are heavy in my spirit today. I woke up with it with this morning, and I've known all day that I was going to record and put this out. Before I share with you what's on my heart, I want to make a side comment on something that I saw today that I think needs everyone's attention. There is an open letter that was written by the Bishop of Albany in New York, Edward B. Scharfenberger. He's a bishop, and he wrote an open letter to Governor Andrew Comio of New York. It is absolutely fantastic. First of all, he is a, I believe, a Catholic bishop. First of all, I don't want you to dismiss him or the letter because he is someone in the Catholic Church. Always know this, saints, brothers and sisters, that there are very good, holy people in every denomination of man. Some struggling, some searching, many, many false. But mixed in, there are some, and you know some personally probably, that you can say, wow, he's such and such denomination or she's such and such denomination, but you know that they carry a truth and a torch within them. This letter is phenomenal, and I am asking you to make it go viral, as viral as you can make it. He wrote in the letter a very, very scathing um warning letter, I was trying to think of the right word, about the issue of abortion. And in that he talks about the Reproductive Health Act, which is RHA, when you start seeing it, that's what it's about, the Reproductive Health Act, which is a very serious, serious matter that is going through the courts involving abortion. One thing that this bishop has, has done, and as soon as I saw it, I literally shook in my spirit, and he has given abortion a name, and he called it the Death Star. I want everyone to start calling it that, the Death Star. This is very serious. And the reason that it is so serious for our country, or for those in other countries as well, is this. I have been helping um, a brother, David Rice, out of Florida. He's written a fabulous book. Um, it's going to be out here in just, just a two, three weeks. And he taught me a simple but profound truth mixed in um, his book. And he's talked to me about it. And that is Satan, Lucifer, the evil one, the dark side, they always require blood. It all goes back, of course, to the original. And see, Jesus shed his blood to cover us, so therefore we don't have to shed our own blood um, to be saved. And you see some of those rituals in India. They beat themselves up and cut themselves, and there's blood, 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 blood. Okay, but the issue of abortion and the blood of the innocent which is the purest blood offered at sacrifices. And it goes all the way back to the beginning of time, and you go back to the Aztecs and on and on, where there was huge shedding um, and the killing of children and putting at the altars and sacrifices. And so there is a lot going on right now because of the volume of blood, innocent blood being spilt just through abortion alone in this country. And if you've listened to any of the prophetic words that I've put out, um, there is great reference to the blood that's flowing from the innocent at the altars. And um, so I don't want to get too far into that, but this is a fabulous letter. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know the title of it, but just look for open letter to Governor Andrew Comeo of New York, Comeo, C-U-O-M-O of New York. And I want to, from now on, we're going to call abortion the Death Star. Okay, first of all, there are a lot, there are many false prophets and false prophecies being put out. I am about to begin calling them out by name. Many of you are looking for 
a new truth or a, a piece of truth or uh, a warning, something to, to tell you, project you in the right direction. I think it's natural that we have a hunger for um, a piece of truth. However, what's happening is it, it's like it's, people are looking too much for it. They're not having their eyes and their face in the Word of God. They're not studying the Word of God. Many of you, and I know many of you personally, have uh, communicated with me and I've gotten to know you, and I have a large following, I have a lot of messages. Many, many of you are not even attending churches right now, even though you feel that you carry the truth, and you do. I understand that, but what happens is that people are beginning to try to grab here, grab there, listen here, listen that, click on that, click on that, oh no, oh no, and you're looking for that sensational, and then when it's a word of God, you yawn and we become bored. So that's the first thing I want to say uh, that's really, really bothering me. There is a specific language used in prophecy. There's a specific loop involved in prophecy. There is specificness, specific, specificness in prophecies that false prophecies do not carry. And let me tell you a couple of things. Living for God is not about feeling good. It's not about prosperity. It's not even about peace. It is about conviction. It is about repentance. It is about giving all. It's about dying to self. It's about dying for others. It's about having nothing. It's about living with nothing, but yet carrying it all within. It's about loving others. That does not mean entertain their sin. So these messages that some of them, there's a group of them. There's doom and gloom, doom and gloom, doom and gloom. And then there's others, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. But if you are not in a state of heavy repentance and heavy conviction and heavy awareness, you're going to miss it all. You can have all these recordings and you can click on it and you can pass it around to people and you can feel that you have listened to an amazing dream. You can, you can listen to this amazing vision. But you're like being the spoon-fed baby on applesauce with a bib. Start putting on the apron and being the servant and the maid. Then you may just have a piece of the path that you're supposed to be walking on. Okay, so why is there urgency in my spirit today? Many of you know that really it's today and tomorrow, beginning um, this evening, but the super blood wolf moon is today at the time of this recording. And I don't want you to feel if you're listening to this on another day that this message doesn't apply to you because it does. Right now at the time of this recording, the super blood moon will be in just a few hours. The total, total visibility will be in North America, South America, Western Europe, and Northwestern Africa. There will be a partial portion of parts of Africa and Europe that can see part of it. And this is what the Lord has shown me and I feel in my spirit. The Lord's hand is lifting. The Lord's protective hand is lifted. Lifting. It's about to be lifted. I do not know, and if I am told, whether in a dream or a specific word, I will put it out. I don't know if this will be physical change immediate or if it's the in the spirit realm which will be immediate and I do know the demons are released are going to be released this evening um, I, I can't say that it will be something we will we will feel immediately um, or hear immediately or um, it be something in the physical and there be this big explosion or big fire or a tornado or, or a earthquake I, I can't say either way I, what I sense, it's definitely, absolutely in the spiritual. And it's very, very intense because God's covering is being pulled back and removed, therefore allowing the pit to be even more opened, releasing even more. And if you are not in tune of what is going on on this earth between the changing of the laws, the 
the movement of violence, the, the movement of disrespect and the element of evil that's going on, you've got to be blind. And if you look at it from four to five years ago, then look at it for about three years ago, two year ago, years ago, look at a year ago, look at it from six months. This wheel, I've always said, you know how a big wheel, let's just say it's a big giant wagon wheel, maybe you have one for decoration in your yard and it's stuck in the mud and you wanna paint it or something, it's real big, push, push, push. But once a wheel moves, it rolls very, very fast. And what I have seen happen is the push, uh, the push, the, the little inch here and, and the inch there and, and, and this parade here and this law here and, and, and this situation here and this drag queen here and this, this um, law of abortion approved here and, and this here and, and that here. And now the wheel is rolling. And so what took a few years to do, then took three years to do, then took a year to do, then it's a few months to do. And today with this super blood wolf moon, you're going to see, I'm going to see things move much faster. So this is one I want to share with you. What I feel in the spirit is that this is a first inspection, a passing by of the Holy Spirit. I'm saying this within my own heart. I, I hope I've given it the right name. And I, the word that keeps coming to me is a first inspection flyby. You know, sort of like the death angel went over. I saw something coming and going over it is like a pass by you know when you go to the air shows and they come by and they come by and they say well that's a pass by that's a warning oh thank you lord i just got it oh that's what it is you know when there's war and the fighter jets they come and they come within a distance of their target or the person that's in the wrong airspace or violating law or violating airspace and they do what's called a flyby thank you lord that's what it is okay this is what i have been told in my spirit that this is a flyby this is a warning and it's a flyby inspection so let me tell you what this means first of all Remove anything that is unholy from your homes. That's movies, that's trinkets, idols, statues, paintings. Um, you will know, especially if you ask God to reveal it to you, He will tell you what's in your home that needs to go out. If you ask Him, if you feel like you, you're not sure if it is or isn't, but you know what I'm talking about. These movies, I can't tell how many of you that are listening right now that you claim you have true truth and you are a true child and holy one of God and you just watched a R-rated movie. You just watched some filth. Well, you know, you just sort of tuned out the language. Well, you just tuned out that sex scene. Well, you know, we don't talk like that, but it was a good movie. You know what I'm talking about. The Lord put on me before this pass by tonight. I don't know what time. I, I don't know. I just know it's soon. Even if you listen to this another day, do the same things. You think holiness just belongs on one day? It belongs every day. Right now, as fast as you can, you get the filth out of your homes. If you're unsure about a certain item, get on your knees and ask God to tell you, have you gotten everything out of your house? Remove it. Remove it, remove it, burn it, get outside, put it on fire. If you can't do that, bag it up and get it off your property fast, not, all, not in your garbage can. Get it off your property, get inside, scrub your hands with soap and put oil on your hands and repent. That's the next thing is repent of having these items in your home. I'm going to ask a side question. Do you believe you can withstand persecution? You have the strength Many of you are going to say, oh, I have the strength. You don't even have the strength to go get these movies and this filth out of your home. But you think you're going to withstand persecution? Here's the first step. I'm squeezing you. I'm saying get it out of your home. You're not going to be considered holy until it's gone. I'm squeezing you. Which will you choose? The next thing is the mezuzah. Um, that's what I call it. I may have the wrong emphasis on the word, but... 
this is what the Jewish people have in their homes that are affixed to their door frames. Um, it's called the mitzvah, which is the biblical, the means biblical commandment. That is to write the words of God on the gates and doorposts of your home. That's Deuteronomy 6, 9. And actually, two, ver two verses later, um, it's actually the affixed means to put it at an angle on the doorpost of your home. Um, I have one that actually came from Israel. And I'm telling you right now, as fast as you can, get the word of God over your door frames. If you don't have a mezuzah, obviously not everybody does. You have a printer, type, get some scripture. Use new. I, personally, I use New Testament scripture. Claim the word of God. Claim this is a holy household. You are covered by the blood of the lamb. I'm sorry I didn't get ahead of time to give you some scriptures. That's another thing. I'm not going to spoon feed you. Ask God. Seek him. Do it fast. Get covering over your door frames of the blood of the lamb. If you need to handwrite it, if you need to use chalk, he also instructed that it be on the um, your gates. So not just on your door frame. So if you have a physical gate of sorts to your property, you need to do that as well. You may feel silly. It doesn't matter. That's pride of man if you feel silly. I can ask you this. When the, the children were instructed to put the uh, blood over their door frames, do you think that they felt silly? Do you think they had a meeting and a vote? Do you think they said, you know, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I don't know about this stuff. I don't know. No. It was their obedience that saved, the obedience without question that saved them. That's actually in the main prophetic word that I put out a little while back um, that explains what happened. And it was their obedience that saved them. It was Noah's obedience that saved them. And um, many others. Okay. Let's see. Let me look at my notes. Okay, the next that um, I'm calling for tonight, okay. All right, here's a question I've written here. Do you feel that something is missing from your church or the church? Um, there's many that are feeling that, and that's actually good. Um, and that means that you are hungering for a deeper level of, um, you have a thirst and hunger for righteousness. And there's a lot of people feeling that, and that's because of the lukewarm church and all of the nonsense going on. Um, I can tell you, um, do not be dismayed. Uh, stay faithful. Stay diligent. However, you must be on assignment to be the strong one in the situation. They may reject you. They may laugh, you, they laugh at you. They may not accept you. But don't just stay home. That you will be held accountable for. Because the church isn't for you. We are the church for the world. Truly, what should be happening is we should be going to the church, meeting in little groups and clumps, talking about what we did through the week, encouraging one another, sharing our scars and wounds, and go out for the week and do it again. But instead, we're coming for a program, we're a couple of little sniffle and snots at the song and the altar, and then we leave and uh, nothing's changing. And you think nothing, you know, think I'm wrong? The world's falling apart. It's horrible what's going on. I know. You're going to sit at your computer and you're going to type a little message in a great scripture. But what did you do outside the door when you put your shoes on? Did you go to the courthouses? Did you go to the squares? Did you stand on the corner? Did you go into the church building and confront issues? Well, that might make us a little uncomfortable. So this is what I'm calling for. One is to get the filth out of your house. Seriously. Number one. As fast as you can do it. Number two, get the word of God over your door frames and your gates. Number three, call your family together as quickly as you can this evening. Pray together as a family. What I saw is a huddling of to together and a candle. And the first thing is for you to repent. Repent as the leaders of your home and repent as a family and you think you have nothing to repent of. The laws of abortion, oh, excuse me, the Death Star alone, the blood is on our hands. Why? Because we allowed the passing of these laws. Did you go and stand at the courthouse? Did you go to the um, senators? Did you go to their place at their offices? Did you get a group of people that you have a Bible study with and you pray together with? Did you get your group together, load up, get a group from your church, 
you know, the great big church that all meets together on a Sunday morning, pastors who are listening, did the whole church go and stand and say enough? And until you can say that, until we can say that as a family, as a town, as a city, as a church, as a state, and as a nation, until we can say that, the blood is on our hands and we need to repent and we need to repent as fast as we can. Get the filth out of your homes. Get the word of God over your door frames. Repent, repent, repent. Call your families together. Here's another example. You think you can withstand persecution and some of you are feeling uncomfortable calling family members and having them come over immediately for prayer. I saw families huddled together in the dark with a candle, have communion together, find some bread and some juice, a cracker, and water if you need to. This is symbolism. And commune and confess and repent and become holy people again and read God's word together. Pray hard. Ask God to reveal the truth to you with what is going on. We are not blind people in this world. We are not lost. However, there's many people that are claiming the covering of Christ who have no clue. And I pray some of you that are listening, that God, that you will obey these instructions that I'm giving you and that you will take this to a new level personally. Those of you, some are listening, that you've been seasoned Christians and believers for a long time, but you know there's things in your life and things that you've not done that you knew you were supposed to do, and you did not give up habits and vices and addictions. I'm talking about television addictions, movie addictions, pornography addictions, and you haven't let go of it but you wear the mask. And I'm telling you, the first pass by is tonight. We may feel it in the physical. We may not feel physically anything, but those in the spirit are going to feel it. And they're already feeling it. They're feeling a, feeling a stillness in the wind. Okay. Another thing the Lord showed me is strength of faith will be in the bloodlines. Physically be together and be moving to be together for the hard times that are coming. Um, there's some more that I'm going to be putting out um, in just a few days. I have a, a project coming. Uh, when, you, I use the, when you see the word project, um, I'm not sure how many days it's going to take, but you will see that that's what I'm referring to. And um, I really want you to listen to that when that comes out. I'm telling you, tough times are coming. It could be as immediate as a few hours. And it could be, I, I've not been released to tell you anymore uh, of what the Lord has shown me. Um, preparation is not about water and it's not about canned goods. It is about preparation of the heart. Because I want to tell you, your faith is going to be tested. And you think you are strong enough to withstand persecution. You think you're strong enough. Let me tell you. All the disciples fled, and they were with him every day for three years. Don't ever be so naive that it will not take daily denial of self and daily praying for strength each day for giving up it all before you're ever even able to stand against the persecution and attacks that are coming against you and your families. I pray this evening is a holy evening for you and your families. Again, if this is another night that you're listening, make it a holy night tonight. God, this is the first pass by. This is the first warning. And he is looking for his holy people. He's not looking for half holy. He's not looking for those who can quote scripture. He's looking for clean homes. He's looking for where the holy one can step through because a holy messenger, a holy angel cannot cross over into the unholy. I'm going to close with this. It's interesting that this morning, this is the chapter that I landed on. Isaiah chapter 26. I study out of the Geneva Bible, but I read out of the NIV. 
We have a strong city. God makes salvation its walls and ramparts. Open the gates that the righteous nation may enter, the nation that keeps faith. You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast, because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord, is the rock eternal. He humbles those who dwell on high. He lays the lofty city low. He levels it to the ground and casts it down to the dust. Feet trample it down. The feet of the oppressed, the footsteps of the poor. The path of the righteous is level. O upright one, you make the way of the righteous smooth. Yes, Lord, walking in the ways of your laws, we wait for you. Your name and renown are the desire of our hearts. My soul yearns for you in the night. In the morning, my spirit longs for you. When your judgment comes upon the earth, the people of the world learn righteousness. Though grace is shown to the wicked, they do not learn righteousness. Even in a land of righteousness, they go on doing evil and regard not the majesty majesty of the Lord. O Lord, your hand is lifted high, but they don't see it. Let them see your zeal, your people, and be put to shame. Let the fire reserved for your enemies consume them. Lord, you established peace for us. All that we have accomplished, you have done for us. O Lord, our God, other lords beside you have ruled over us, but your name alone we do honor. Though we are now dead, though, I'm sorry, they are now dead, they live no more. Those departed spirits do not rise. You punished them and brought them to ruin. You wiped out all memory of them. You have enlarged the nation, O Lord. You have enlarged the nation. You have gained glory for yourself. You have extended all the borders of the land. Lord, they came to you in their distress when you disciplined them. They could barely whisper a prayer as a woman with child about to give birth who writhes and cries out in her pain. So we are here in your presence, Lord. We were with child and writhed in pain, but we gave birth to wind. We have not brought salvation to the earth. We have not given birth to people of the world. But your dead will live, their bodies will rise. You will dwell in the dust. Wake up and shout for joy. Your your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. Go, my people, enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed by. See, the Lord is coming out of his dwelling to punish the people of the earth for their sins. The earth will disclose the bloodshed upon her. She will conceal her slain no longer. As I was reading, I thought about a particular pastor that I know is listening. And I know there are many pastors who are struggling. I know that you at one time felt a very strong burning in your heart. And the productive production um, and the modern church has taken over. Some of you feel that you've really done it right, but I want to tell everyone, including the pastors, until our pockets are empty of coins, until our cabinets are empty of food, until our home cannot hold any more who need shelter, each and every one of us are guilty of not being sold out for Jesus Christ and our God. Get real, get serious, and get moving immediately. It begins tonight. God bless you.